Good evening, everybody. The NFL understands one thing today more clearly. If they thought there was still a president in our White House who led from behind and ran from fights, they are no longer under any such illusion. This president means exactly what he says, and he won't tolerate disrespect for our anthem and our flag. I wasn't preoccupied with the NFL. I was uh, ashamed of what was taking place because, to me, that was a very important moment. I don't think you can disrespect our country, our flag, our national anthem. Uh, to me, the NFL situation is a very important situation. For too long, our leaders have stood by as the left attacked our national values, our heritage. But Americans aren't standing idly by. The crowd at the Cowboys Cardinal game erupted in deafening boos last night as Cowboys owner Jerry Jones knelt with his players before the national anthem. Jones, a staunch supporter uh, of the president, had previously said it's really disappointing when people disrespect the flag. There was some considerable disappointment last night in Phoenix. Confusion from the players is manifest. Yesterday's hero, Steelers lineman Alejandro Villanueva, now feels, he says, embarrassed for standing alone and regrets his decision. But Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger now says he regrets not standing on the field during the anthem and instead hiding in the locker room with his teammates. A new poll shows President Trump enjoys the support of a large majority of Americans in his demand that the NFL end its insults. A Reuters survey finds 58 percent agreed that professional athletes should be required to stand during the national anthem. Now, that is not radical. The NBA requires exactly that of its players. Senate Republican leaders once again failing the president on a key agenda item. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell officially, once again, acknowledging defeat. He scrapped a planned vote on the Republicans' latest effort to repeal Obamacare. The president's focus now turns to tax reform. Tomorrow, he travels to Indiana to deliver a speech at the state fairgrounds there to get momentum behind tax reform. My first guest tonight says the Republican Party needs to work on health care despite the failure in the Senate. Joining us, Congressman Jim Jordan. He serves on both the Judiciary and Oversight Committees, a member of the House Freedom Caucus, which we've just learned is meeting after a tax reform forum uh, scheduled for tomorrow. Yep. The group could vote to take a formal position. We'll find out right now. Congressman, good to see you. Good to be with what, you, Lou. What's going on with the, uh, the Freedom Caucus? Well, you know, look, we did an op-ed last week, and we said sort of three three key principles. Does Will the bill actually cut taxes? Will it simplify the tax code? And on the corporate side, will it create a tax code that's conducive to producing economic growth? And specifically, we want to know the answers to a couple key questions. What's the corporate rate? What's the small business rate? What's the repatriation rate? And on the personal side, how many brackets are they going to be, and what are rates for families? So if we get the answers to those questions tomorrow at this retreat, then hopefully we're moving in the right direction, and we're going to get this done for the American people. But we're going to wait and see what happens tomorrow at the retreat. At the retreat, but the president will be uh, uh, going to Indiana to yeah. lay it out. Uh, will it be and his rates or will it be Ryan's rates? Will it well, be a so-called better way agenda, the, the speaker's nonsense? Uh, at, at what point will this, there be leadership within, your, within right. the House, within your conference, that will support and drive the agenda of this president? Well, the, the, the president has been great on this issue. He's been talking about a 15 percent rate. He's right. talking about letting families keep more of their money. He's not talking about this revenue neutral uh, framework, which too many folks here in Congress want to talk about. Never forget, Lou, revenue neutral is a Washington way of saying we're going to keep the tax burden the same. We're just going to shift around who pays what. And under that scenario, what always happens is big corporate interests do fine, but middle class families get get the shaft. So we're not interested in that. Since when did we say letting people keep more of their money was somehow a cost to the government? So let's forget the revenue neutral. The president hasn't been locked into revenue neutral. He's been locked into letting people keep their money and creating a tax code that produces growth. That's what we're pushing for. That's what we think we're going to get tomorrow. But we're going to wait and see. Well, Secretary Mnuchin has been talking about uh, paying for it with 3 percent plus growth. He's been talking yeah, uh, in, that's in very serious terms. Uh, the president himself wants the biggest tax cut in American history. Yep. Uh, that's going to be a tall order. 
Uh, it's, it's all a tall order with this uh, Republican-led Congress and Republican-led Senate. But, yeah, but it shouldn't be. This is, this is what frustrates me, what frustrates you, what certainly mm -hmm. frustrates the American people is this job is pretty basic. What did we tell the American people we're going to do? What did they elect us to do? Let's do that. We certainly told them we were going to cut their taxes. We told them we were going to repeal Obamacare. We told them we were going to build a border security wall. Let's just focus on getting those things done. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the health care debate didn't go the way we wanted so far. I still think there's a, there's a chance to do that down the road. But let's get tax cuts right. Let's get tax reform right, because that's what we told the American people people we were going to do. One of the most difficult, problematic issues, of course, the wall, which the president promised uh, throughout the campaign. Yeah. Ryan, the speaker, the greatest opponent uh, of that wall. Uh, he has blocked it in every way possible. Uh, the, the president has promised tax reform. Now it is his issue. The president signed on to what you guys had voted for seven and a half years, repeal of Obamacare. Yep. And today, yep. Again, Mitch McConnell has failed the president and failed the party. How yeah. long can he or should he and well and Speaker Ryan stay in office? Here's here's what bothers me. What again bothers you and so many Americans is six Republican senators voted against the very same bill they had supported 20 months ago. The clean repeal legislation, legislation that right, I reintroduced this mm -hmm. Congress was offered as an amendment back in July and six Republican senators voted against the exact same sentences, same com commas, punctuation, everything was the same and they voted against it. That, that, that's what drives voters crazy. So that's the frustrating part. And I think part of that frustration is going to play out tonight in Alabama. I think Roy Moore is likely going to be the next United States senator from that great state. And I think that's some of the frustration that people have had with what's going on here in Washington, what, what, what has failed to happen here in Washington, namely doing what we told him we were going to do. Yeah, the fact of the matter is a McConnell, a Ryan, they look like uh, troglodytes that somehow have survived uh, eons. Uh, and they have, uh, if you will, been Darwined out, but just they in the conference don't realize it. Well, I mean, think about the last few years. We had Dave Bratt beat Eric Kenner in, in a primary. We had a group formed here on Capitol Hill called the Freedom Caucus. Yep. We had a sitting sitting speaker step down midterm. We had Donald Trump get elected president. And as I said, I think it's likely that Roy Moore is going to be the next senator from Alabama. If that's not sending a message to the establishment, I don't know what does. So let's get focused on what the people sent us yeah. here to do last November. Uh, all of that, I think, would be consonant if you're poster boy for K Street, uh, weren't your speaker. Uh, that would probably convince people that there was serious change at work within the conference and a uh, real opportunity uh, for the president's leadership uh, to be followed. I suppose I'm being optimistic about that. What do you think, Congressman? Well, you know, again, um, our job is pretty basic. We make this too complicated. Right. What did we tell the people we we're going to do? Let's get that done. They expect us to, to cut Does their the taxes. Does the speaker understand that? I think so. And, I, and again, we're going to see tomorrow. We've been pushing. I mean, look, we right. stopped the border adjustment tax that they wanted to put in. We've held up the budget until we see what's going to be in this tax mm -hmm. plan tomorrow. Uh, that's all moving in the right direction. So let's get let's get get it. Uh, the, those numbers that we've asked for, those rates that we've talked about. Uh, and then let's You're gonna win. And get are you going to win on this? Are you going to get it done? I, I think we are. I really right. do. I feel I feel much we're, better about this right now. Good. Good to hear. Congressman, always good to talk with you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Luke. Congressman care, Jim Jordan. And President Trump saying he'll be in Puerto Rico next week to take a firsthand look at the devastation from Hurricane Maria. Until then, President Trump says the federal government will work hard to respond to the crisis and is doing so. Fox News correspondent Garrett Tenney in San Juan with our report. Nearly a week after the hurricane's deadly swipe, Puerto Rico remains an island wanting. Many of the island's more than 3.4 million American citizens are still without adequate food, water, and fuel. While gas stations, banks, and supermarkets are gradually reopening, there are limited supplies, long lines, and plenty of frustration. We hope to receive more merchandise soon so we can provide to all our clients. We are restricting so we can give something to everyone to extend what we have left. Finally, I got to fill my tank, which was totally empty, and now I've been waiting here a couple of hours for, you know, to get cash because we're out of cash. Relief supplies are beginning to arrive by freighter and by air, but many hard-hit rural areas are still in search and rescue mode with first responders treating patients on the spot. For many, it may be the only care they get. 
hospitals report severe overcrowding, meaning some with much needed medical procedures are being forced to wait. My brother had an accident two days before Ms. Maria visited us, and he was waiting for surgery. He injured his back, his spinal cord. He is waiting. Officials say the biggest challenge is restoring electricity. 100% of the power grid's distribution network remains damaged. Power poles and street lights are strewn about, and more than half the island's transmission towers are completely destroyed. Communication is spotty at best. San Juan's International Airport has become a sweat box of stranded passengers. I've been here since Friday and I haven't been able to leave. Sleeping on the floor without air conditioner, it's horrible and I have to sleep here again. It's very frustrating. The governor telling Fox News' Geraldo Rivera the situation remains a humanitarian crisis of apocalyptic proportions. The infrastructure has been severely damaged. It's going to be an unprecedented and unfolding events that are going to be occurring with energy, uh, telecoms and water and, and so forth. The Trump administration has promised a long-term financial recovery plan that may include forgiving much of the $73 billion in government debt accrued over the years by Puerto Rico. And Lou, you can see, despite a nationwide 7 p.m. curfew, folks here are desperate for fuel. Some of them have been waiting in line now for more than eight hours. Everywhere you go and everyone you talk to, they say they need help. But sadly, for most of the country, including the capital, that help is still several days away. Lou? Dara, thank you very much. Dara Tenney from San Juan. We're coming right back. Much more straight ahead. Stay with us. Alabama's populist Judge Roy Moore promises to defend the Second Amendment, and he clearly means it. Ads that were completely false. That I don't believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the Second Amendment. We take up the high stakes primary election race in Alabama with Dr. Sebastian Gorka here next. And the Dallas Cowboys don't do things the cowboy way. They take a knee before the anthem and then link arms. It's clear the left-wing league thought that fans would simply put up with their insults to the flag, to the anthem, and our country. Not so. We'll take that up here next. Stay with us. Polls close in just under an hour in Alabama's hotly contested Republican primary runoff for the Senate Incumbent Luther Strange has the support of Leader McConnell and President Trump, while Judge Ray M Roy Moore is backed by Trump allies, including former White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon, who linked his candidate to the president at a rally last night. A vote for Judge Roy Moore is a vote for Donald J. Trump. And a vote for Donald J. Trump is a vote to make America great again. Banning on the hustings and uh, that race, very interesting indeed. We're joined now by Dr. Sebastian Gorka, chief strategist for the Make America Great Again Coalition, former deputy assistant to President Trump, and a supporter of Judge Roy Moore. Great to have you with us, Dr. Gorka. It's uh, it's uh, great to see you. Uh, the race itself, uh, the last polls that we've looked at show a, a double-digit lead uh, for the judge. Uh, is that lead going to hold up in your judgment? Uh, I think Judge Moore is going to win. Uh, it may not be double digits, but uh, when I went down to Alabama at the beginning of the week, the crowd was uh, unequivocal. There's one person who represents the president's agenda, and it is not Luther Strange, it is Judge Moore. So I expect uh, Alabama to do what America did on November the 8th and choose the anti establishment candidate, and that is Judge Moore, Lou. Judge Moore is, uh, is in really more than an anti-establishment candidate. He is a committed uh, to President Trump, his policies, as well as being anti-establishment, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why you heard that very important sentence in the president's speech two nights ago. It was a very, very peculiar endorsement of Luther Strange because halfway through the so-called endorsement, the president said, you know what? I may have chosen the wrong guy, and if Judge Moore wins, I'm going to support him to the hilt. So I think the president's instincts 
uh, are, are kicking in. I think you know the Mitch McConnell favored candidate. They've spent more than ten million dollars on Luther Strange, this former lobbyist. So you know uh, the judge is a MAGA candidate, a Make America Great Again, whether it's the Second Amendment, right. whether it's rule of law, whether it's draining the swamp, uh, the judge is the man. The attack on him, of course, I mean, there have been many and vicious attacks as well uh, in this race, uh, but the attack that has uh, been most, uh, I think, problematic in terms of the response is, uh, can he beat the Democrat uh, as readily as uh, many have suggested, including the president, uh, Luther Strange could. I think if you look at how many votes, uh, the, the percentage of votes the president won last November in Alabama, it was more than 60%. I, I'm not worried about the Democrat candidate uh, even making a, a serious, serious headway against Judge Moore. If Judge Moore wins tonight, it sends a very powerful message. Look at what just happened with Senator Corker. Look at what happened with Congressman Denton two weeks ago. The establishment is running scared. And you know what, Lou? That includes the Democrats as well. Well, it is, uh, as you say, these developments are starting to pick up. Uh, and tonight, uh, we'll know soon uh, how, it, uh, how it has unfolded. I want to turn to, uh, as well, North Korea. Uh, the president is confronted with uh, terrible, terrible choices, as you know better than uh, almost anyone. Uh, and at, at this juncture, uh, what do you think uh, is the likely, uh, the likely result? I'd like the, the, to say something very clear to your viewers. This is a very important show uh, that you, you chair. Um, I only left the White House a few weeks ago, and I was in the Oval Office with the president once, just the two of us. And this issue came up, and the president explicitly said to me, I have no intention and no desire to go to war over the Korean Peninsula. So that's fact number one. But if you listen to his words from the UN General Assembly, if you listen to the words of his Secretary of Defense, Jim Mattis, this president is not going to equivocate. There'll be no leading from behind. If North Korea threatens and endangers our territory or our citizens, this president will take action. He doesn't want to, but he will defend this great nation. And that's, that's all that the American people need to know. And it's, it's so extraordinary to look back to the, the Clinton administration, uh, the Bush administration, the, the Obama administration, the passivity exhibited by all three presidents when it comes to the threat uh, in the development of nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles on the part of North Korea. It, not just, it, just, just not just North Korea. Not just North Korea. Lou, this is this is you know this this uh, facilitation includes Iran. And what what lessons is Iran drawing from what's happened in the last 16, 17 years? They want to get the bomb. They're not they're not in it for nuclear energy. This is one of the richest oil nations right. in the world. Um, but but a very clear message has to be sent to Pyongyang and the president. Do, the president has. Uh, with his initial uh, courting uh, of President Xi Jinping, correctly identified the linchpin, it, it seems to me, uh, in, this, uh, in this crisis. And that is the state that made it possible for North right. Korea to develop the bomb to this extent and to uh, apply the technology. The technologies in both instances are Chinese. The, the monster that it is Kim Jong-un was created by China. Absolutely. This is a Stalinist regime, more Stalinist than the Soviet Union ever was. It's built around a personality cult. It's, it has people that are starving every day. But at the, but the, at the end of it all, it's just a satrapy. It's just a client state of China. And the fact that they came on to the UN Security Council, thanks to Ambassador Haley's work for that sanctions package, that they've agreed with us to cut off access to banking for North Korea, that is a massive step. So anybody who doubts the seriousness of this administration just has to look at what they've achieved in recent weeks. But it is up to China and Pyongyang to de-escalate. Yeah. I, I think that, uh, if, as we conclude here, uh, it's great to have you with us. Uh, I, I think that there has been a sea change in expectations uh, of what this administration uh, is faced with and what it may even so reluctantly uh, have to do to respond to North Korea's threats. Dr. Sebastian Gorka, great to have you with us. Uh, good luck tonight. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Lou.
Take care. Be sure to vote in tonight's poll. Do you believe the NFL will do what the president and American people expect of everyone and demand NFL players stand for the national anthem? We'd like to hear from you. Pass your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs tonight. Wall Street, stocks close mix. The Dow down 12 points. The S&P up a fraction. The Nasdaq up 10 points. Volume on the big board, 3 billion shares. Equifax CEO Richard Smith officially retired, but he's walking away with an $18 million pension. Sales of single-family homes unexpectedly fell 3.4% last month to an eight-month low. That because of the hurricanes that, uh, that hit both Florida and Texas. A reminder, listen to my reports three times a day, coast to coast, on the Salem Radio Network. Up next, President Trump demands the NFL stop insulting America. I think it's a very important thing for the NFL to not allow people to kneel during the playing of our national anthem to respect our country and to respect our flag. The president's leadership is integrity, the subject of my commentary coming up here next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. A lot more straight ahead. The national left-wing media keeps referring to the NFL players' various ways of disrespecting our national anthem, our flag, and the president's condemnation of their insults as a controversy. Let me be clear. There's no controversy here. The NFL's management, nearly all of its owners, and many of the players are simply dead wrong, and their conduct is outrageous. Their rationalization of their conduct only adds to the outrage. As I said here last night, this is no petty dispute between the leftist league and President Trump and the majority of the fans who support the president. This is no mere difference of opinion about the First Amendment. The president decided to defend the nation and our values, among which is honoring our flag and all it represents. The NFL, filled with hubris and contempt for its fans and the nation, at least they cherish, has the gall to call the president divisive when the responsibility for division is surely that of the leftist league and its players. Some, particularly in the left-wing media, have already played the race card, as the left always does when it is desperate. Desperate moments produces the race card, and this is such a moment for the left, never dreaming President Trump would call them out. For too long, patriotic Americans have been forced to watch as president after president took a knee before the national left-wing media entertainment complex. It's waged an all-out war on America's heritage and our values and gotten away with it to this point in movies, in television, in commercials as parents, particularly fathers, are portrayed as morons, as normal families are mocked, as right to life is ridiculed, as individual dignity and decency and family values are trampled by Hollywood and, yes, now the NFL. The NFL fully expected it could crudely insult every American and our symbols of strength, insult our heritage and our values, and the left-wing media laughed as they did so. That is, until President Trump was elected on the simple idea that being a citizen means more than being a consumer, that the people must actually govern, that corporate America and special interests will not rule this great nation. The president's stunning electoral victory means we don't have to bow in the face of monopolies such as the NFL, a greed-driven institution hell-bent on forcing its radical ideology on the nation even as it feasts on taxpayer dollars to fund stadiums where players will be encouraged to insult our sacred heritage and precious national values. Make no mistake, the left means to tear down everything we hold sacred and to subvert President Trump and his administration because they now fear him, because they know he will stand up against all enemies of our great nation, fearing none. President Trump won't kneel before any enemy of America, and he won't hide when there are enemies to be defeated. And most of America now stands with him. Our quotation of the evening from Martin Luther King, Jr. 
He said this, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The president has been challenged, and he has responded. We're coming right back. President Trump campaigning to drive tax reform. He vows to make it simple. We must make our tax code simple and fair. It's too complicated. People can't do it. We will cut taxes tremendously for the middle class. The real question is, what are Republican congressional leaders really worth? Anything at all? We take up the question with Ed Rollins. And these daredevils turn a moving train into a playground. You heard me right, a moving train. We'll show you the fascinating tricks and stunts they came up with here next. Stay with us. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlett and committee Republicans renewing their call for a second special counsel, this one to investigate uh, uh, a number of issues outside the scope of Mueller's probe. Congressman Goodlatte uh, says it'll be a critical uh, uh, investigation of the Obama administration, including the actions of Loretta Lynch, James Comey, Hillary Clinton. Joining me now, Ed Rollins. He served in three presidential administrations, chief political advisor to the House Republican leadership, the dean himself. Uh, let, let's just go after it right now. I mean, uh, Mitch McConnell fails again. Uh, adios, ditch Mitch. Well, I, th I think the... the the members themselves have to decide, are you going to have an ineffective leader who basically is not an asset anymore? Uh, you know, obviously, they get to make that choice. President doesn't get to make well, that choice. Well, isn't he an outright liability? Well, he is a liability. And I think at the end of the day, I don't know whether he's tired. I don't know whether he's ineffective or what the drill is, but it's not working. And I think the reality, when you when you have you've had two or three shots at this thing, it's the same bill that was as as Jim Jordan said, same bill six members voted for a couple of years ago. I mean, uh, it's pitiful. And you need the Republican guy, Party is either going to go down to defeat in 2018 or they're going to win. Well, the truth is, and if that, they follow these, the, you know, these I, as, as I said, and watch a guy like Jim Jordan, who's just not only an incredible leader, but an incredible man, uh, uh, a, a national wrestling champion, Olympic uh, caliber, Olympic who served his country well. Uh, that's the kind of leader we need. We don't want someone to get up every day and fight for these things. And, and, uh, who's articulate and smart. Well, uh, you know, also so. there's, a, there's a quality of followership, if you will. Absolutely. And, and, and people have got to be careful what they're following because what the Republicans are following in the House conference is, uh, I, I mean, a guy's been there for, what, 20 years? He hasn't, he's never done anything. Mitch McConnell, the same story, except he's been there 30 some odd years. I, I can tell you that the, the rules of the Senate are so confusing, and, I, and I'm wow. someone who studied this. So let's just get down to where we're going to get a leader that's going to go in there and basic a majority rules. He's got 51 votes. Get 51 McConnell votes, hasn't win. got the sense, the judgment, or the no. decency to do that. Well, he wants to, he wants to be about all the the, 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 uh, the techniques of the past. It, yeah, well, it, but it's not I, working. I can it's, tell you what. It's not working. Character is fate, and his character it's, 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 is very it's much not, it's not in question. Uh, let, let's turn to the president, uh, Alabama. Uh, and Judge Roy Moore and Luther Strange. Who's going to win it? Judge Roy Moore is going to have a big victory tonight. Uh, every conservative leader in the country, uh, including my my pack, we've endorsed them. Uh, he's going to he's 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 been leading well, and the turnout uh, is indicating that uh, the places where his people are, they're turning out in great numbers. Uh, and what I think the president is going to find is a populist president who basically did not endorse the populist candidate and. And, but I think it's going to be more on McConnell at the end of the day in the chamber than it is yeah. going to be on the president. I, I think that the president did something in his speech last Friday. I mean, he managed to discuss the race. The race and I, I have to tell you, I think he was so clever in his uh, positioning that no matter the outcome tonight, the president will, will win and have a candidate that he can support. So that's pretty adroit, I think, on the part well, of Well, his us. supporters are going to win because obviously those are the same people that are in the trenches right. working for more. Very quickly, the uh, the president versus uh, the NFL leadership. I mean, they're left wing. They're telling yeah. the American people, go to hell. We'll uh, insult you. We'll insult your anthem. You and we'll make millions of dollars while we do it. Well, and you know, then they'll you, talk about privilege. They're going to lose They're going to lose the privilege. They're going to lose the millions of dollars. The national anthem is a very critical part of, the, of every football game. We, we put troops there. We sit, have jet airplanes. We do the whole bit to honor our flag, to honor our veterans, to honor the whole bit. And if the NFL, it's so PR conscious, doesn't understand that, uh, 
I don't think they're very it, PR it, conscious it's, now. It's crazy. And I can tell you, one of my, my PAC, which is the number one Trump PAC, we're leading a charge. And the charge is, if they won't stand, we won't watch. Uh, it's going to be price going to yeah. boycott. And I think at the end of the day, that's the only thing they'll understand at the end of the day. Bad behavior on the part of the yeah. players, but more important than this yeah. is... Well, I mean, the ignorance of the NFL is... is this is all part of the patriotic just, system and honor in our flag. Yeah, well, I, I mean, these, you know, they, uh, everybody understands that. Uh, it, it's what they have decided to do. I'll tell you this. My wife and I are not going to another NFL game. We decided uh, my wife canceled direct TV. And I want to give some credit. My wife canceled our NFL ticket subscription, which we've had, I, I think, right. for forever. Uh, and and AT&T and direct TV guaranteed everyone who cancels a refund, uh, which I think is a stand up, if you will, a thing for AT&T and DirecTV to do, and I want to con I, I want to compliment them, congratulate them, uh, and, and and thank them because that's the right thing to do, and that's, uh, as, that's a as, highly prized uh, as, as, uh, decision. As, as, and I'm sorry. That's all right. I said, as a guy who watched lots of games, didn't watch the game last night. I'm not going to get watch college games and give up the NFL if they don't fix this thing. Yeah. Well, I'm not waiting, and my <laughs> wife isn't waiting. Good. Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, please roll the video. These adrenaline junkies turn a train into an extreme sports playground, filling cars with water, using a Russian swing to backflip, dive, and free run. And yes, they had permission to do it all. I, man, that's quite something. And just when you think that these extreme athletes have run out of ideas about uh, thrill seeking, well, you see a video like this one. Wow. Up next, Special Counsel Robert Mueller set to interview White House staff. We'll take up the Mueller witch hunt with Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett here next. Joining us tonight, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Greg, great to have you here. Great let's to be here, Lou. Let's start with this quote unquote controversy in the minds of the left wing national media. This is a straightforward issue. Uh, the NFL's players and the NFL are insulting every single American and dishonoring our anthem, our flag, and the country. Yeah, these players are uh, so uninformed or stupid, I'm not sure which, they don't understand what the national anthem and the American flag stand for. We put our hands over our hearts. We are paying tribute and expressing our gratitude for the generations of Americans who have fought and died for our freedoms. That's what it's all about. It's not law enforcement in Baltimore and S St. Louis that these players may have a beef with. No, the American flag is much larger and more meaningful than that. And I wish these players understood that. But I'll tell you what, the American people, vast majority of them, understand it. And thank God the president had the courage to stand up and say what needed to be said. Yeah, and I think that many of these uh, players, but particularly Roger Goodell, who has a special and I think uh, a, a tragic responsibility because he has so defiled his own institution right. uh, by permitting this conduct. Uh, this president is not, he didn't hesitate for a second. It has to stop, period. This is a president who knows right from wrong, and he expresses it from his heart, and he is cheered by Americans everywhere for standing up to these players. In, in empirical evidence of that, uh, the latest Reuters poll, 58%, 58% of those surveyed support the president's position here and, and oppose that of the, the, the players. And you can, inter you know, in another poll has it as high right. as 68%. But to see this, this happen, uh, the legality of it is straightforward. Oh, it is. Most Americans think, and we've talked to them, oh, they have a free speech right to do what they're doing. No, they don't. Uh, look at the First Amendment. It's government action that interferes with your free speech right that's prohibited. It doesn't apply to private businesses. The U.S. Supreme Court has said so. A business can fire an employee for expressing themselves in a way in the workplace that is detrimental to the business and that's what's happening here. And these players, black and white, should be fired for it. But the players run the team these days because they make tens of millions of dollars. 
and not the owners, and that's sad. Uh, it, it is, in this instance, it is, uh, well, it's sad, but it leaves all of us boiling mad, and that was probably not uh, the smartest thing that the players and Roger Goodell could have done. Greg, thank you very much as always. always. Greg Jarrett. Up next, the Senate's latest effort at Obamacare repeal. Uh, it's in tatters. Charlie Hurt, Molly Hemingway join me here next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Last night, we asked you in our online poll, is it time for the NFL to replace its gutless commissioner with someone who will stand up for American values? Only 96% of you believe that would be the appropriate thing to do. Joining me now, Molly Hemingway, senior editor for The Federalist, Washington Times opinion editor Charlie Hurt, both Fox News contributors, and great to have you with us. Molly, the president is winning the day, whether it is uh, in, the, in the earlier polls, 68%, Reuters, 58% Americans are siding with this president against the NFL and their insult to all Americans. Well, this has, it's one of those stories where everyone in the media acts like what the president is doing is insane, and then it turns out when the polls come out that he has definitely got his finger on the pulse of the American people. And we'd already known this. You know, months ago, there were polls showing that NFL is having a problem with viewers no longer watching the game. Mm -hmm. And one of the most commonly cited reasons was that there are these protests before the national anthem. And it speaks to a much deeper issue about what it means to be American and what we think about how to correct problems in American culture. Do you throw out the baby with the bathwater or do you appeal to the ideas of the American founding? Or you do what uh, the president uh, said, uh, Charlie, it, it, tell them to go to hell. This, <laughs> this is, uh, in point of fact, unacceptable behavior on the part of any citizen. And what are yeah. they thinking about? And end it now. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, it's interesting because I, I can guarantee you that Donald Trump didn't look at, an, at a single poll yeah. when he made his decision. Yeah, to, he wasn't you know, triangulating this, was no, he? No, no, he was not. And he was not, uh, you know, briefed by advisors and, and, and slick people that are telling, you know, let's bank shot this and do that. Or he just went out there and, and, and it is a, uh, you know, it's, it's an emotional issue. Um, and he is kind of our, our, our cheerleader in chief. Uh, patriotism in this country is, is an important thing. And he just went off on it. And, uh, and you know, any political expert would sit there and say, ah, this is not something you need to get. This is a distraction. Don't get into this. But the, the, the fact remains, he was exactly right ab about it. And Molly is exactly right. He does have his finger on the pulse of what people think. He sees things in very plain, simple terms. It's been his success all along. And, and I would argue that it'll be his success uh, in running for re-election. Uh, and, and, uh, and I think it'll be a success in that the NFL at some point will come to its senses, oh, yeah. if only because the free market makes them do so. As I said, we're, in, my, in my family, we're not, watching, we're not watching NFL. Uh, we're not paying for anything to do with the NFL. Uh, uh, it's just, it's appalling. Uh, this is one of the advantages, isn't it, Molly, of electing a populist a highly energized populace as your president. He does speak for the people. He means it. And by the way, in Alabama, it's a choice between a populist and an establishment candidate. The, the establishment candidate supported, of course, by the populist president. <laughs> what do you make of the outcome tonight? I think this is fascinating, what's happening in Alabama. I think that Donald Trump made an error in supporting the establishment candidate, mostly because he was so tied in with the corruption problem that is already an issue in Alabama with the previous outgoing governor using state resources to cover up the affair that he was having. By he, you, you are referring to Luther Strange. No, Luther Strange was sort of implicated in this. He said that he would he would investigate it if he were, uh, and he never did. And so I think a lot of voters down there are really upset. But what I find interesting about this is people think well, that Trump supporters. Who was supporters, implicated? I, I, I'm sorry. So Luther Strange is sort of tied up in this whole That's thing because I, he didn't. He didn't. I was trying Sorry. to clarify, and I did so in an extraordinary <laughs> way, in which I'm I muddied everything up. Sorry. But what I think is interesting <laughs> is people think that Trump supporters are just with him no matter what, and by the and I think what's going to happen is that Roy Moore is going to win in Alabama, and what this shows is that. People who support Trump, that's a bigger movement than even Trump himself, and that this is sort of a necessary correction, I think, for Donald Trump to understand his supporters and that they are not just going to follow him no matter what. And I think that's a useful thing for him to learn and for other people to learn as well. Wait up. 
Charlie. <laughs> Well, Bigger you know, than President Trump himself? <laughs> Come on uh, now. Those people who are coming out to support uh, Roy Moore, are the same. many of them are the same people that supported Donald Trump, and they're supporting Ro Roy Moore for the same reason they supported Donald Trump. Right. So we're, we're in this interesting sort of situation right now, and I'm not saying that this was a calculation or anything like that, because I don't mm -hmm. believe it was, but we're sitting here looking at a situation where no matter which of these men wins, it's a win for Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Molly, I, I, let's turn, if we can, to a, another failure by Mitch McConnell. Does he survive this? Should he survive this? And who should replace him immediately? Well, it is a, it's a disappointing failure that Republicans who have promised for so long that if we gave them power, they would take care of the problems of Obamacare have once again failed to do it. I do think he has a very slim majority there. There's not a lot that Mitch McConnell can deal with, but the Republican Senate in general needs to understand that if they don't accomplish the signature policy goal that they have been talking about for so long, there will be repercussions, even if it's people not showing up to support them in a, a year from now. Yeah, it's, it's basically, a, well, it's a done deal. There won't even be a vote. McConnell will be limping off of Capitol Hill. Uh, you get the last word on this, Charlie. Well, and, and the sad thing about it is this is the sort of thing where Mitch McConnell is uh, at his smartest. He's supposed to be able to navigate these things uh, behind closed doors brilliantly, and it's a real disappointment to sit here and see yet another failure. Well, uh, and on we go. Uh, we'll find out more soon. Charlie Hurd, thank you very much. Molly Hemingway, thank Thanks, you so thank much. You. Good night. Thanks for being with us.